A good principle for choosing what to learn is to focus on the most useful things first. But how do you know what's most useful? Frequency lists can be helpful, but are often misused. Hello and welcome to the Hacking Chinese podcast. In this week's episode, we are going to talk about the most common Chinese words, characters, and components. And this episode is meant for both language learners and language teachers. Before we get to that, though, I'd like to say that there is a reading challenge on for July, and it starts on July 10th. If you're interested in that, head over to challenges.hackingchinese.com. And of course, if you listen to this later, you can still head over there and see what challenges are available on the front page. Okay, so the topic today is word, character, and component frequencies, and how you can use these to learn or teach Chinese. In general, how much Chinese you learn depends on three things: how you study, so that's the method you use; how much you study, so that's how much time you invest into learning; and what you study, so that's the content, what words and so on you are studying. Naturally, if you want to learn as much as possible, you need to maximize all three. Of these factors, I think content is the most overlooked, meaning that many care about how they learn and how much time they spend learning, but don't really think too much about what they are actually learning. If you want to learn more about this basic equation of method, time, and content, that's something I've written about in an article, and I'll put a link in the description. So, what should you learn? This is easy to answer in the abstract. You should study whatever is most useful to you based on your goals for learning Chinese. In practice, however, this is hard to answer. But fortunately, we can use frequency as a proxy for usefulness. This is based on the assumption that something that occurs often in the language ought to be learned before something that is less frequent, simply because you're likely to both use it and encounter it more often. Please note that frequency is not the only possible proxy for usefulness. Other forms of lists that might be useful are from textbooks or proficiency exams and the like. When I say that frequency can be used as a proxy, I just mean that it's hard to know what is useful. That is something that can't be measured objectively, and it certainly can't be measured by someone who isn't you. And therefore, we need to use a simpler method or something that other people are interested in measuring and using that as a stand-in for usefulness. For a more in-depth discussion about vocabulary lists, please check out the link in the description. Because in this episode, we are only talking about frequency resources for learning and teaching Chinese. The problem is that students and sometimes teachers have a simplistic way of what frequency lists are and what they can and should be used for. It's easy to grab a list of the internet and use it as an absolute reference, believing it to show the most common components, characters, or words. It probably does, but it's important to remember that all frequency lists are based on just a small fraction of all language. Here are some questions that many students never even consider. Is the data based on written or spoken language? Maybe both. If written language, what are the sources? Newspapers, novels, blogs, maybe. If it's spoken language, what are the sources then? Actual conversations, chats, movies, something else. Where does the data come from geographically? What time period? The answer to these questions matter. In the written article that comes with this episode, I have listed the top ten characters in two different frequency lists. These are obviously based on different sources, and I'm going to read them. And I want you to think about what kind of data you think that this frequency list is based on. And these characters are all super high frequency because it's top ten. So I think most of you will be able to know which characters they are, even if you don't see them in writing. So list A contains of d, and that's the particle d, nian, year. 日、day、中、middle、人、person、月、moon or month、一、the number one、大、big、在、to exist or at、是、to be。So that was list A. List B contains of 我、I or me、的、the same particle as before、你、you、是、to be、了、that's the particle 了、不、no、not、们、plural marker、这。This, e, one, ta, he. While some characters appear on both lists, there are important differences. What do you think that these lists are based on? Did you observe something about them? Which one do you think would be most suitable for a student wanting to learn conversational Mandarin, A or B? 
Here's some information about the two lists. So list A is based on formal written language, which you can easily see because of the lack of pronouns high up on the list. The exact source is Chinese language Wikipedia, which is also something you might have been able to guess because of the very high frequency of characters used in dates. It could have been any encyclopedia, of course, or maybe a newspaper, but dates don't occur that frequently in the language in general. List B is based on spoken language. More precisely, it is based on movie subtitles. You can see it's probably spoken language because people like to talk about themselves and people in their vicinity, hence all the common pronouns at the top. Of course, movies don't contain naturally produced spoken language, but at least the goal of most movie dialogue is to make it sound as if it were, which is good enough in many cases. I hope this example has convinced you that just grabbing any random list you can find on the internet after searching for one minute is not a good idea. I will introduce a number of frequency resources later and help you choose one that suits you. Another thing we need to talk about is words, characters and components. Compared with other languages, Chinese can be broken down into much smaller pieces while still retaining some meaning. For example, if you take a two-syllable word and break it down, each syllable will be represented in the written language by a character that means something. Often these characters can then be broken down into components that themselves also mean something. Frequency data can be used on all levels, but because of methodological issues, character frequency is what most people talk about. It is after all unambiguous what a character is, since it occupies exactly one space on a page and it's easy to calculate frequencies using characters as a unit. However, if you want to focus on spoken Chinese, you are not much helped by character frequencies, but would much rather use word frequencies. If you focus on learning Chinese characters, you might also want to break down characters into components and see which are the most common ones, and learn them first. Next, we're going to look at frequency resources for first Chinese words, then Chinese characters, and then for components of characters. There will be a lot of links here, of course, because I'm recommending resources, and rather than listing all of them in the description to this episode, I will simply link to the main article on Hacking Chinese, and you can check out the links there. That also allows me to update the resource after this podcast episode has aired, so that you can find up-to-date resources whenever you want. So, for spoken language, and perhaps written language too, words are the most interesting unit since people use spoken words, not written characters, to communicate. Coming from a language like English, this might seem straightforward enough. Just calculate frequencies of words, right? Not really. Chinese has no spaces between words, which means that it's far from easy to figure out where one word stops and the next begins. Hong, for example, red, is a word. So is deng, which means light. But hongdeng is a word too, so a red light as in stopping at a red light. Then I think you can argue that huangdeng, so a yellow light, is also a word, but what about zdeng, which would be a purple light? Are these also words? We did delve much deeper into this question in episode 71 of the podcast, so you can check out that if you're interested. But the point here is that defining what a word is is not easy, and it can't really be done in a way that a computer can automatically use in order to segment text properly. This means that most of the frequency lists you found online won't really match the definition of a word that is used in, say, a dictionary. So something like 不要 or 一个 will be considered words even though they clearly aren't. I think we are ready to look at some of my favorite resources, and I've tried to list them in order of importance or in the order I want to recommend them. So the first one is subtlexch, and I guess that's for subtitle lexicon Chinese, I would guess. And this is a list based on movie subtitles in Chinese and come fairly close to natural spoken language. It contains 100,000 simplified words without definition or opinion. But you will find all the phrases that I mentioned before, such as jogge and bunong and so on, and these aren't words, but they are still counted. And I will not repeat this for all the resources I'm mentioning here, but to get this list you can just follow the links in the written article on Hacking Chinese. So resource number two is K5 Word Frequency Dictionary for Chinese L2 learners. This list is somewhat unique in that it draws on materials for people who learn Chinese as a second language, i.e. textbooks, graded readers, and so on. The project website offers a simple search interface, but you can also download the whole list as spreadsheets or text files or whatever you want. The list is in simplified Chinese and it does have pinyin. 
I think this list comes very close to what I would consider most useful for second language learners. Number three is the BLCU Balanced Corpus Frequency Lists. And corpus here means word bank, and this one is based on 15 billion simplified characters. And that's a very large corpus, and it's composed of news, literature, blogs, and much more. It's the biggest and most comprehensive corpus that I know of, and this makes it useful in itself. It does have some oddities, for example the character D, as in number something, is at the top, and I guess this is because it scanned pages, so D, hmm, yeah, is extremely common. The files in this project are a little bit hard to access, but I've left some instructions for how I made it work on my computer on Hacking Chinese. Number four is the University of Leeds Internet Word Frequencies. This is a frequency list based on the Leeds corpus of Internet Chinese, it has 90 million tokens, and it's from 2005. It's simplified characters with no frills. This one is also searchable online, which makes it handy to use. Number five is actually a book that I think is worth getting, especially if you're studying traditional Chinese. It's called 6,000 Chinese Words, a vocabulary frequency handbook by James Irwin Dew. It doesn't only contain word frequencies, but lots of other analyses that are interesting for language learners. So those were the top five resources that I've listed in the article, and I think that's enough for the purpose of this episode. If you want to check out the others, they are of course in the article on Hacking Chinese. If you know of any word frequency resources that I haven't listed in the article, I would be delighted if you left a comment and let me know about it. Next, let's move on to frequency resources for Chinese characters. This is, like I said, the most easy type of frequency data to obtain, because it's so easy to make these calculations and everybody knows what a character is. The only thing you need to be mindful of is what data the frequency list is based on, and like we saw, if it's based on spoken language, you will get a certain type of characters at the top, and if you base it off written language, it will look quite different. So my top pick is Da Jun's Chinese Text Computing, and it's a character frequency list of modern Chinese. I was actually unable to find his name in Chinese characters, he only writes in English, and then he uses J-U-N-D-A. This list is from 2005 and is based on written Chinese, both fiction and non-fiction. It contains 10,000 simplified characters with pinyin and definitions. The same data is also available as two separate lists, one for fiction only and one for non-fiction only. Number two is the same subtitle database I mentioned before, so I won't introduce it again. But you can get frequencies here for characters as well as words. My third pick is Patrick Zein's The Most Common Chinese Characters in Order of Frequency, and this is a fellow Swede who started learning Chinese much earlier than I did and actually used his page when I started out learning. It's based on Da Jun's research, but contains further explanations as well as definitions for variant pronunciations, and while it is in simplified, it also shows traditional variants. I think top three is probably enough for this episode, and if you want to check out the rest, you can always head over to the article. So finally, let's have a look at frequency resources for character components. So when looking at character components, the problem is similar to that discussed above regarding words. There is no unified definition of what a component is, and there are often more than one way to break down a character. For example, the character Xing, the one that means OK or to walk, was originally a pictograph showing a road intersection. So in a sense, it can't be broken down and should be treated as a component itself. However, if you just look at the modern form, you can visually break the character down into two components, or maybe even three. Or to take another example, the character xiang, as in to think, do you break it down into xin and then xiang and be done with it? Or do you then also break it down into its two components, the tree and the eye? In fact, this kind of data is even trickier to deal with than words, because at least there is some consensus of what ought to be a word, it's just that it's hard to apply computationally to a large dataset. When it comes to components though, it's even hard to find the data. As a shortcut, people sometimes use radicals instead of components, but there are many more components than there are radicals, and this is a misleading approach in the first place. So that doesn't give the whole picture. Other times, people break things down as far as the result can be written with Unicode, regardless of how reasonable this is. This leads to frequency lists where single strokes are the most common components, but this is not helpful for language learning. 
One resource that uses the radical approach I just mentioned is my own Kickstart Your Chinese Learning with the 100 most common radicals. And while this doesn't cover all the useful components, it does certainly contain most of them. There are also some other lists out there, for example Hansa Craft has several lists that show different components, for example productive character components in order of frequency, and there is a separate one with sets of phonetic components, but these are sometimes not very reliable and uses a graphical breakdown of characters, which as I said isn't ideal. I do also want to mention some other resources that aren't strictly words, characters or components, but might still be interesting. For example, there are frequency lists of syllables, which can be useful in some contexts, and I've also found a character frequency list that also includes the number of strokes for each character. Again, links to all these can be found on Hacking Chinese. Before we round this off, I'd like to say a few words about proficiency tests such as HSK and TOCAFL, because they also have word lists, but they aren't really based on frequency, or are they? Well, yes and no. While frequency of course was taken into account when creating the official vocabulary list for these proficiency tests, they are not frequency lists in and of themselves. There are many words that appear very early in these lists, but which are rather uncommon. This is as it should be, because there are many words that are disproportionately important for students. However, there are also words that are very common in the language as a whole, and that are either omitted or delayed in the vocabulary lists for these proficiency tests. This is a rather interesting topic, I mean which words have been left out of the HSK for example, and why have they been left out? That's actually something we discussed in episode 2 of the podcast, so maybe you can listen to that after this one. I think that wraps it up for today. There are many useful frequency lists available online, and I hope I have convinced you that you should spend a little bit more time and care when selecting which one to use. Of course, it depends on what your goal for learning Chinese is, what kind of language you're after, but randomly picking a list is not the right way to go. Thank you for tuning in to the Hacking Chinese podcast. If you like this episode, please share it. More information and inspiration about learning and teaching Chinese can be found at hackingchinese.com. See you in the next episode, and until then, good luck with your studies!